All right. Uh, good morning, everybody, and thank you for being here to this introduction to the DAAS project. <laughs> Magic. Um, yeah. A bit about myself, so my name is Marco Marinello. I'm a freelance developer and a system administrator. I have also developed uh, with uh, a partner the new application for the membership committee. I'm the CEO of an Italian internet service provider, which I deliberately omitted from this presentation since I don't want anything uh, uh, which is uh, indexable uh, to have uh, a direct connection between me and the company. I'm also a member of TDF and the president of the Linux user group of Bolzano for one more year. But let, let's get in, into the topic of the presentation. So D as a service, uh, yeah, because D in DAAS stands for document or or documents, but let me have to have tell you the first things first. So a client, uh, which is a colleague, uh, since uh, I mainly work uh, in um, providing other companies and IT companies uh, with development and system administration support rather than final customers. So he comes to me and is deploying a software on Windows that unfortunately relies on Microsoft Office to run some sort of mail merge. It's the first time he's deploying this solution on a large scale. Imagine large scale more as uh, 30 clients rather than 300 or 3,000, but still pretty big that he needs a, to install the application server on a Microsoft Windows server. And apparently, Microsoft Office licensing for Windows Server is core-based, as many other softwares like the Oracle database. It's much more limited than the RGB thing. So if you have a server which runs RGB servers, so remote desktop services, the licensing uh, yeah, it's related to the RDP server. So you, if you have remote desktop services installed on the server, you need a Microsoft license which is bound to the cores of the system. That's the, the true carry. Okay, F thank you Emiliano for <laughs> pointing that out. Yeah, and the software house responsible for Dimension Software, which is not my client, so my client is a system administration company and not a developer of mentioned software is working on migrating the old and legacy desktop application on a browser-based uh, software as a service uh, based on microservices. This will make a lot of sense, I, I can assure you. Let me go on. So how are how is this software currently working and what's the user experience they have now? So this application generates uh, some magic XML with the fields he needs Microsoft Office to fill in a specific document. The application calls directly msoffice.exe, which boots up, fills the fields, and the user is free to manually edit the prepared document. So he has Microsoft Office open with let's say, pre-filled fields. He edits the document and then usually prints it or sends the final version via email. So how we designed to migrate this? So we, had, we still have the application generated fields content mapping, much probably in a JSON style or um, a more comprehensive style, let's say. We have a library of pre-imported uh, templates. And all of that uh, goes into the document as a service API. And then 
we give them as an output of this HTTP call the file in, in requested output format. So you're allowed to ask for an starting from an ODT template and output it as an ODT template, but you're also allowed to ask us to convert to a PDF. The API will have a minimalistic web guy from which you can uh, create, upload, uh, and delete templates. Edit the templates directly in the browser thanks to Free Online Office, which was formerly Lugul, but hopefully will soon be Wasm. And check the number of requests in the last month by credits, manage token, etc. all the kind of stuff you need to do in an API management. So some of you may already got this meme from, from Despicable Me, which says, uh, in terms of money, we have no money, which is certainly true, don't get me wrong, but I hope uh, none of you here is interested <laughs> in the amount of money we make, rather in the code. And in terms of code, uh, we have no code. So I have presented this as an idea, but has not been yet implemented. Or well, we do have some code, we have this, for example. Uh, you will find the link which is on your left uh, in the published version of the slide. And it's a link to the uh, LibreOffice Git archive. And this is a part of the Protus software. And uh, it's responsible for generating uh, the certificate of membership. Same thing, just in a different way, has been implemented also in MoveEd, which is a software for to foster accessible mobility. You can go check the talk by my colleague Andrea Esposito at last year's SFSCon. And both this implementation rely on ODFPI by the, by the European Environment Agency. So as you can see, it's the library we actually use to edit the content of the document. And then we launch uh, the LibreOffice Endless Executable and ask him to convert uh, the ODF document into a PDF. This has to be still considered in an alpha stage. It's certainly not adequate for large scaling, lacks of any kind of cache, is missing support to a FODT, although it's not our fault since it's, it's not supported upstream by the ODFPy library and needs all field to be created as a text. So while you're creating the template in LibreOffice, uh, you need to always insert uh, a text uh, in the field that you're creating. Uh, otherwise, uh, we might have some issue uh, feeling that uh, since the um, ODT standards uses two different attributes uh, for numeric and non-numeric values uh, of fields. So if are you interested, get in touch. Just for you, the document as a service API will be priced starting from uh, 0.001 euro per invocation. It feels much uh, like uh, this kind of mattress uh, <laughs> <laughs> spots on the television. I'm sorry for that. It's, um, it's a fake price, uh, it's just uh, to get you into the idea of what the document as a service API could do. So take a medium sized VPS, load it with the document as a service API, and suppose it converts uh, 16,180 documents every month, which should be one conversion every 2.5 minutes. And 0.001 euro would become a reasonable price. And just for a reference, uh, we are now experiencing about two seconds for the conversion from the ODT template uh, to a field PDF. Of course, a more advanced, reliable setup uh, would need uh, a much more reliable infrastructure. So possibly based on some kind of uh, orchestration, maybe Docker Swarm or Kubernetes, we can, which can scale on demand based on the volume of requests uh, is currently encountering. 
front proxies for load balancing, uh, multiple location, replicated database, etc. So jokes aside, this could be an actual project. I personally can foresee a relatively wide audience of developers, so colleagues, that are willing to pay to externalize documents handling. So they have their own application, uh, they just need to load uh, an ODT template to our platform uh, and then with an HTTP call being able to convert any kind of template into PDF and give them back uh, uh, to their users. So it would be, let's say, a, a zero knowledge uh, implementation for them since uh, it would only require an HTTP request, which is quite standard stuff for, uh, for a developer. Of course, uh, software as a service and microservices based architecture are become more and more popular. So would be a, a, a useful component to have in, in your own infrastructure. And uh, also from a economical point of view could be a pretty solid project. In, the all, in this context, uh, we would have also stimulated the migration to LibreOffice. So the client that uses uh, uh, Microsoft Office uh, to generate and fill the templates, obviously, has also the templates uh, in uh, Microsoft formats. Uh, and we had planned to do a one-day conversion with just converting all the doc, uh, docx, uh, etc. templates into ODT and import them uh, into the, the new software. And could be a great uh, with LibreOffice technology product. So a realistic timeline to deliver this kind of solution would be approximately a month and a half to develop the core part of API and GUI and one month for bug fixes and implementation into your own software. So if you're interested, it's something that can be really done. It's, it's not just an idea. All right, thank you for listening. And it's time for questions. No, mm, sorry. Let's let's not hide behind the finger. I was somehow involved with the same customers, so I maybe have some more uh, in-depth knowledge of the issue. So basically, in the, in the beginning, you said that the final customer need to uh, modify the finalized document before sending it to the customer and so on. Have you got any idea on how to implement that on a, on a service perspective? Yeah, so basically from our end and also from the user end would change basically nothing. So uh, as now Microsoft Office fires up uh, and he can edit document, uh, from the API, we give them back the ODT file uh, and they can fire up uh, LibreOffice and edit the document uh, basically as it, uh, they are doing now. Uh, <laughs> does that answer? You also mentioned the PDF, so that, that way is kind of optional. Yeah, so s since the implementation we wrote up to now, both for the membership certificate uh, and for the kind of transportation se sheet, uh, usually it just need to be printed without any kind of modification. Uh, we decided to export directly to PDF, but it, it's a step further in the procedure. We just need to stop earlier and give you back the ODT field file. Sorry, see now you have a so kind of privacy nerd, uh, well, that, that probably is the first thing that comes to mind. So you're offering it as, as a service. So it means that there are some organizations that will need to populate this field with data. That could be also personal information, or maybe even confidential information within the, the document. How are you going to be able to ensure that actually this data is not being seen, not even by the system administrator running the service, 
and the uh, and the user actually will expect that none of this information will be kind of leaked in any way. And is it possible then also to say, okay, I like the service for I don't know some mailers which you know are not that. Uh, uh, let's say risky in terms of information, and then I would like also to have a VM or a service span off of my private cloud so that I, I make sure that all this information remains within my kind of protected environment. By the way, shout out to Wilhelm for <laughs> this great job of, <laughs> of microphone swapping. So, beginning from the end, yeah, of course it will be possible, so you just need uh, to fire up your own Linux virtual machine, uh, install the software which will be open sourced, uh, and you'll have your own instance of the API. On In terms of privacy and so on, I can see two levels. So the lower one in which you are willing to feel uh, a document uh, we have uh, there will be no conservation so all the data you're transmitting to us uh, will expire in, in the time of the call so once we answer your, your HTTP call data will be gone no another level would be on the templates so I can imagine uh, we are going quite deep but uh, since we have time let's assume uh, uh, some usage by I don't know banks uh, or uh, uh, medical institution etc I can imagine they might have some kind uh, of uh, restricted information also in the templates uh, themselves and, and not just in the data they are filling that, that's uh, a bit more difficult so the um, their own instance of the API would probably be the better uh, um, the better solution since there is no easy way to get away with uh, of encrypting the templates uh, or anything like that. So since yeah, we we would expand the uh, elaboration time since we need to decrypt the template and so on uh, and. Uh, I don't know how many real customers that need this kind of feature but don't, are not willing to pay for their own instance there are, so. Well, this is kind of more the, uh, a point of view from, uh, let's say, Something that we should start, I believe. So from from uh, from TDF, in actually getting the, this very nice idea and say, okay, uh, sounds brilliant. Now, what shall we do about it? I mean, uh, should uh, at this point uh, uh, TDF says, okay, we would like to sponsor the 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 idea, support it, and so on. Uh, but then, naturally, you know, it's nice to have a so kind of clear rules. So if we we work together, so we, uh, we we contribute to the to the project. Then it would be nice to say, okay, there is a commercial opportunity out there, but then there is also something that the wider community at this point is going to be able to actually uh, use without coming up with some, let's say, commercial problems in in in, in there, so that everybody actually benefits from what is being developed together with the with the rest of the community. Do you see any kind of limitations or? Problematic, you know, that from the, the point of view. No, since, since the <laughs> since the question, <laughs> so the answer is no. Um, but I personally think that the most contribution that TDF could do is more in terms of uh, visibility of the project. Uh, so. Not that much as, uh, of, of course, <laughs> but m money is always, uh, uh, is always a benefit, but uh, mm, the most difficult uh, part of the project, uh, uh, from my point of view, is to find the users, so the developers that are willing to use it. 
so a customer base uh, in substantially, uh, which could also be a customer base of people ju- deploying the product uh, on their own. But the problem, I think, is to gain uh, an arbitrary number of users that are needed to be able to tell that the solution is alive. But of course, feel free to chat with me later. About <laughs> Thank you.